Okay, my name's uh, Garrett Hart, and last uh, at the last NDRB meeting, I said I'd do a presentation on CouchDB, and what I wasn't thinking about when I said I was going to do that is I was going to be on vacation. I'm actually, hopefully, sitting on this very beach right now. So, instead of me being there, I'm going to try and give screencasting a shot. One of the reasons I volunteer to give presentations is it gives me a real good reason to, to learn something. And in this case, I'm definitely learning something new. So there's, there's a likelihood that I may get something wrong here, but I hope uh, the bulk of the information is useful. OK, what is CouchDB? Uh, we'll use the description from their site. Uh, Apache CouchDB is a distributed, fault-tolerant, and schema-free, document-oriented database accessible via a RESTful HTTP slash JSON API. Among other features, it provides robust incremental replication with bidirectional conflict detection and resolution and is queryable and indexable using a table-oriented view engine with JavaScript acting as the default view definition language. Thank you. That concludes my screencast. Kidding, kidding, kidding. Uh, before we get into uh, the terms that were thrown around in that description, uh, I think there's a little bit of backstory about this project that I think is uh, worth uh, knowing about. This is Damien Katz. At uh, one point in Damien's career, he worked for a little company called IBM on the data source for a little project called Lotus Notes. Uh, eventually, he left there, and he worked for a company called MySQL. And when he left there, he went to work for a startup. And when he left the startup, he uh, gathered up his family and moved to, I believe it was North Carolina, where he, he could live uh, for less money than where he was living at the time. And for two years, lived off his savings and created CouchDB. Now, since then, CouchDB is getting a little traction. It's an Apache project. And Damien got himself hired by IBM to work on CouchDB full time. You got to admire the guts it took to do something like that, and I'm kind of glad that the story seems to have a happy ending. So uh, let's start messing with CouchDB. So the uh, CouchDB project site uh, has got plenty of information about how to get uh, started on your particular um, platform. I happen to be running on the um, Mac which has this nice utility here that you can get called CouchDBX. It's got everything you need in one binary and a, a nice little tool here but uh, to keep this um, cross-platform I'm gonna use Couch's uh, built-in utility called Futon and we're also going to be using the terminal a little bit um, testing out that uh, RESTful API through curl. Okay, so CouchDB's listening to us. Now let's uh, learn a little bit more about it. Let's get it to tell us what databases it already has. Okay, and then let's, uh, for a given database, let's see what kind of information it'll just hand us back on that we'll pick blog okay okay and doing uh, one more thing before we switch to futon we're going to create the database that we're going to be working with and in the rest of the world if we want to create something we want to put it so we will we're going to call it uh, ND RB over here and switch this to put
Okay, that's happy. So let's check out Futon. So we don't see our database yet, but if we give a little refresh here, there it is, NDRB. And so since we are in Futon, we could have just come right here and created a database. A uh, nice little tool tells you what you're allowed to add in for values, but we're not going to do that right now. And let's go to our new database. Okay, so right here I realized that um, CouchDBX is doing something I think I use for the screencast, and, and that's that it's showing the request down at the bottom there. And so I decided to bag across uh, platform nests. You saw enough of Futon there to see how it works and, and get an idea how it would work on your platform. So I'm going to switch to CouchDBX. So we're going to, we've in our any in NDRB and we are going to create a, a blog here. So we're going to start off with our first document here and we could specify an ID uh, but we are not um, because we're going to let CouchDB just, we're going to see what it does for us by default. Okay, and what we get by default is a big old honkin' UUID for our document's ID and we also get uh, revision number, items that got have leading underscores, I believe are reserved um, for uh, field names by CouchDB, so stay away from that. And since we're doing a blog, we're going to add a field, and oops, I accidentally added two, but that's alright. We are going to have, it's a blog, so we're going to have a title for the post. Okay. Oh, we got a problem because I didn't put invalid JSON there. It needs to be a string. Okay. Let's add some content. Okay, it's happy with that. And let's save it. And it's happy. Okay, so blog posts often have tags associated with them. So we're going to add tags. And this time we're going to get slightly fancy and we're going to use an array. save it. Let's take a quick look at the source and see how it's shaping up. There's our straight up JSON. Okay. We're going to add one more field and blog posts often have commenters. So comments this guy's going to be an array too, but he's going to contain hashes. And the first key in the hash is going to be author. And this one's going to be Baldwin. Jeez, I cannot type Baldwin David. And he had something to say. He has a comment. Yep. Okay, did I finish off my hash? No, I don't think so. Let's see if it's happy. Yep, okay. Take a quick look at the source. 
good. Okay, so I'm going to stop recording myself for a while and add in um, some more comments and another uh, blog post so we can see how we get data back out of this thing. Okay, so I've added a second blog post and now we're going to start pulling things out of CouchDB. And once again, there's a RESTful interface and the simplest way to pull something out is by uh, its ID. So here we've got we're hitting the localhost, we're going to do a get, we're going against NDRB, and here's the ID of one of our posts. And we hit return, and that's what we get back, JSON. Okay, now let's get a little bit more complicated. So, beyond the simplest query that we've just seen, CouchDB uses MapReduce to pull items out of its databases, and it stores those <coughs> MapReduce functions in a special document called a design document which we're going to go ahead and create for the NDRB blog. So CouchDB has a naming convention and uh, you start it off with design and then you finish it off with the database that you're doing the design document for and now we can add some JavaScript uh, map and reduce functions to this document. So to test our um, map and reduce functions we can go uh, Puton has this and so does uh, CouchDBX. You can go over here and you can say um, we can show only design documents which is what we happen to be working on right now but we're going to look at temporary views and here we can uh, run ad hoc uh, views against our database. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is that CouchDB uh, pre-calculates its views. So as you add data, at some point it becomes impractical to run them because of, uh, I believe, speed reasons. I have not done anything that involves so much data yet that I've got to that point, so I can't really comment on when that would happen. Okay, so let's just uh, run the query that it starts out with by default and see what happens. Okay, so we get back a hash. We get key value pairs. That's uh, something we need to keep in mind. Um, this time, we it's just a JavaScript function. It takes uh, a doc as an input, and we're going to emit a null for the key in this instance and then we're going to admit the entire doc as the value for that key. Um, and there's our straight JSON again. Let's do something that brings us back the title as the key and then the content as the value for that key. Okay, so this time uh, still a JavaScript function taking in the doc document uh, we're going to emit the doc.title and the doc.content. Let's hit run. And there we go. We get our title as our key and our content. And uh, let's go ahead and save this one. Okay, so there it's prefixed with the underscore design. And we want it to go into NDRB. And let's call this one uh, by title hit save and uh, when we save it we get switched to a page specifically for the view we're up here and notice that it saved it underneath the NDRB um, document we can go over here to the design document we can take a look at it and let's take a look here we have our views so we can expand it that way if we want to we can also look at the source again to see that again we're just saving uh, JavaScript functions inside of a JSON document. Okay, now let's start working towards the data we'd need to have a tag cloud for our blog. Okay, so let's take a quick look at our two blog posts. And there we've got our tags for the first one. And source-wise they are an array, JavaScript array. And here's our second one. And there's the tags for it. 
So this time, instead of working with uh, a temporary view, I'm going to work directly in the design document itself. Okay, so I've pasted in a new map function, and again, it's taking in a document. And the first thing we do is we have a conditional to check that the document that we're actually working with has tags, because we're working with something that doesn't have enforced schemas. You're going to need to actually check that the thing you want to work with exists in the particular document that you're um, going to process. So once we know our document has tags, we're going to use this fourth loop to step through them, step through the JavaScript array. And again, we're going to emit a key value pair. The key this time is going to be um, the particular tag that's in the array at that position. And we're going to, for the value, we're going to emit one. So let's uh, save this guy. Uh, one thing to remember is when you've, you've saved it in the editing uh, portion of the view here, it's, it's, it's not been saved uh, to the database yet. You need to make sure you come up here and hit this guy. Okay, so let's switch our views. Let's go here and see what our tag counts uh, map function actually emits. And no surprise, the, the value comes back as one. And what we should notice here is that uh, most of the tags are unique to the two posts, but uh, one tag, vacation, has uh, been used in reference to two of the posts. And for our tag cloud, you know that we'd, we'd probably make that be a larger word based on it having um, been assigned to more posts. So we need a way to sum up those values so we can determine how big we would make our individual tags. So we're going to go back to our design document and we're going to edit the tag counts view and we are going to add a reduce function and map functions always emit a key value pair and reduce functions always take in key value pairs and all this one does is after our map runs the reduces run on it and taking in the keys and the values it for a given tag it will return the sum of the values and so since we emitted as our value a one it'll sum up those ones um, and hopefully we'll get one of those tags back with a value of two so we've saved it save our document we will head over to the view, hit tag counts, and it worked. We've got vacation listed once now, and it's been given a value of two. So the, the use of views that we've seen so far haven't really required any uh, user input. Getting the count of tags would just go against the whole database to, to calculate its values. Um, let's create a map function that would allow for some user input. And so we'll go to edit our design document again. And this time, let's say uh, we want to make the site uh, searchable for posts by, that have a given tag. So I've created this uh, map function, post by tag, takes in a document, if there's tags, for each of those tags, another function is run, just a JavaScript function. The input to that function is a tag, and this is what's going to be passed in uh, by the user. And what it will do is emit the tag as the key and the document's title as the value. Let's save that. Okay, let's switch to curl to call the view. So looking at our URL, we see we're hitting our NDRB database. And you can see that we're drilling down, oops, 
through our design document, NERB underscore view, and the view's name is post by tag. And we're going to pass in the key of idiot, which is what uh, we want to return posts that have a tag for idiot on them. I'm going to hit return. And we get back idiot for our key. And then for our value, we get back the one uh, post that had that tag. And let's do, just to make sure things are working correctly, we'll switch our key to vacation and we should get two back. And sure enough, there's two keys, vacation, and the two different values for the uh, title of the blog post. And while we're in curl, I want to show you one other thing that might uh, trip you up along the way. Let's um, run uh, the query that we did for tag counts and see what we get back. Now that's not like quite what we saw in um, CouchDBx, and that's what we would we wouldn't see that in uh, Futon either. So let's go back to CouchDBx, see if we can figure out what's going on. And we're going to run tag counts again. And notice and that's what we expect. And uh, notice there's this little warning down here that um, for us to see the same results, we need to add this uh, group equals true parameter to our query. So we'll switch back to curl here. And we'll slide in it. And group equals true. And now we get back. Uh, a JSON response that is more in line with what we saw in CouchDBx. I know that's not a lot, but I'm going to stop for now. And at the next meeting, I would like to show you all how to uh, one search using uh, multiple keys. Uh, two, once you've started thinking the CouchDB what's way, what's the what's the payoff and um, also, I'd like to show you an example of how to bring back data from CouchDB using Ruby. So uh, thanks for suffering through my first screencast. Uh, if anybody manages to figure out a way to record John's talk on MongoDB, I'd really like to hear that. And um, I've got a beer waiting for me. Talk to you later.